All right, guys. I hope you liked our first video. If you haven't caught that, check out my page or my channel and take a look and see at the 1984 Chevy Square Body C20 X Railroad Truck Service Truck that we picked up. Um, just started cleaning it up. We're not uh, not doing any here uh, how tos or anything on it. We're just kind of doing a little automotive archaeology. Um, I like to pick this stuff up, and now a lot of this stuff's been done on YouTube. You know, comment down comment down below if if you want to actually see me working on these things and doing time lapses and all that. Um, there's a million channels out there doing that. If you're looking for a how-to channel, um, I can do some more how-tos, I guess. I just figured there's a bazillion of those out there. Me, I like I like working on and customizing weird stuff. If I do something that I haven't seen anybody else do, I'll definitely show that stuff. Um, something original. I just don't want to be the same as everybody out there showing you how to do brakes. There's a bazillion videos out there on how to do brakes. There's a bazillion videos on how to, you know, change your door panel or fix your window. Um, if you want to see how I do it, you know, that's great. Let me know what you want to see for content. Um, all I'm doing right now is just picking up some vehicles. Going to show you the process I go through to clean them up. I like automotive archaeology. I get a kick out of looking over a vehicle, seeing what it's gone through, finding weird things with it, you know, receipts in the glove box. Hey, look at they did this or, you know, oh, it's been sitting this long and this looks like it was used for this or whatnot. So as I go through and bring it back to life, I'm going to take you along for that. And I'll show you the before and afters. Um, I'll have to buy a tripod if I'm going to be doing doing things where I'm going to have to do a time lapse of me actually working on the stuff. Um, I'll do definitely take a lot of pictures. I've always done that for myself. Um, and if I ever sell a vehicle, I can show pictures that, hey, I'm not just telling you I did brakes. Here's a picture of what the brakes look like before. Here's the new after. Um, so uh, I can definitely put a lot of stills in. Come along on the ride with me as I go ahead and fix this thing up. Um, the last video was picking it up, bringing it home, kind of going over, learning a little bit about it, cleaning up, going through everything, and just seeing what was there. So this video, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I did brakes. Um, this, this truck sat a long time, as far as I know. Um, the guy that I bought it from, uh, he bought it from the guy who had it a few years, and then it sat forever. And that guy bought it from the railroad company. Um, I don't know if it was on the road when he bought it or not, because the guy that I bought it from said that it was sitting out in the field under a tree and, uh, it's been sitting for a long time, guys. You'll see as the videos go on, I'm just going to do these, you know, 20 minute videos, 30 minute videos, basically in segments as I work on it, I've stockpiled a bunch of video so that at least I can try to every week come out with a video um, of a little bit of something that was done. We're waiting on parts. Things take time. I'm not doing this as a full-time job. This is a side gig. So I stockpiled a bunch. Um, we'll add some video in that might be from last week, and I'll add it into a video that I actually filmed two months ago. Um, I picked this thing up at the end of July, and I've been working on it ever since and just doing a little bit of video and learning how to, <laughs> learning how to do editing and try to make the videos at least entertaining. So... If you enjoy seeing something that was abandoned and forgotten and, you know, left to die, brought back to life, and hearing some history that I find out as I'm going along and things I see and find out as I'm going along, come along for the ride. That's what I'm here for. Um, if there's any content that you want to see, please comment down below. Let me know. Um, please subscribe. Please hit the like button. I guess that helps the channel to spread. If you can share it with friends and family, if it's something you like and you think somebody else might, hey, this guy, you know, did something that's pretty cool. Check this vehicle out. Look what he's doing. Um, I'd appreciate it. I'd really like to see this channel grow. I'd like to do more of this stuff. And to do that, um, it, it, there's got to be a need for it. So thanks for watching. And again, please subscribe and hit that like button. And hope you enjoy this video. And next week we'll come out uh, with the next step. But this one was basically doing the redoing the, the brakes that had sat forever. And we're locked up, um, redoing the exhaust. You'll see in there um, how that affected how it ran. And uh, 
just a little more on what we're planning on doing next. Thanks. All right, well, I didn't videotape this because it's just changing a freaking hose, but you get your bulkhead fitting. That's something that's fun to get off because there's always something in the way. Finally got her though. But new hose, turn the rotors. The guy said they had never been turned. I gotta think this truck really does have 37,000 original miles on it. Just sat a while. That's where the rust came from, sitting under a tree. Rebuilt rotors from AC Delco. New AC Delco pads, that's an AC Delco hose. And turn that, cleaned out all the bearings, repacked them. This front end should be nice. I'll, I'll deal with this. And maybe these, we'll see what they feel like after I clean the crud off. Um, when we put the drop spindles on. Plan on lowering this at least three inches, if not five inches in the front. But with them 19 and a half wheels, they already rub. I gotta find some 16 inch rims, nice dog dish hubcaps. And then this thing will have a 5.6 drop, it'll look good. Should look pretty dang good. That was the last thing we're doing though. First things first, running and driving sweet. So that is the plan. Right now, she once she warms up, she seems to idle good. Haven't drove it yet because both sides were seized. Calipers seized. Wouldn't do this anymore. Took the pins out. Couldn't even get the caliper off. I had to pry the pistons back apart. Both sides and the passenger side rear wheel cylinder. So I replaced both rear wheel cylinders. Those brakes look like brand freaking new back there. I think they're original, but they look like brand new. These didn't even have a lip on them. They were just corrosion. They had to turn them twice just to get the pitting out. The little rust you see in here is it rained over the weekend while it sat here. Um, no biggie. That's all surface. Put them are freshly turned. You can see the turn marks in there. Uh, we'll get this stuff cleaned up. Get the other side done now. I'll take a video of it before we do it. Or this is already done on the other side. I've just been waiting on hoses for an extra four days. So, we'll tighten that nut up. This side's done. Put it back together. We've been doing a little bit more work on the 84 railroad truck, 84 C20 railroad truck. I don't think I took a video, I took some pictures, but I didn't think I took a video of uh, after power washing everything. Big improvement, still disgusting, but huge improvement. Now I can go through and actually, we're going to get a new rubber mat for this. I'm going to get a new dash pad or cover. I'm going to recover these seats. I'm thinking I was just going to refix the doors because they're there's war and kind of sunbaked. Just wondering if I sanded them and painted them, but 220 bucks might be uh, money well spent for new ones. These stupid things, these stupid things are $65 for a pair. Ugh. 300 bucks for door panels and handles, but no holes, that's surface rust. I'm gonna get this seat out, maybe tomorrow. We'll see. Let's go over some plans with you. Ceiling came out really good. Um, you can see still some moldy crud. But really a lot better than it was. So we have a chance to really save this and bring it back in nice. You know, I mean, this, this bezel's filthy. There's not a crack in it. It's not broken. I'm afraid to take it out because I'm going to clean it and uh, clean all the lenses and everything of all the gauges. Everything works but the temp gauge, and I cannot find a temp wire anywhere or a temp sender anywhere in the engine compartment. I don't know if they eliminated it or what. So that's a little deal. A little surface rust over there. Same over here on this one. It's got crud down there. 
Um, yeah, so today's deal was, after I did the brakes, I went ahead and bled it, and I had a problem. It bled it fine, and I couldn't get the brake light to come off. So I bled it one more time, and all of a sudden I had no hardly any pedal. The brakes worked, but there was hardly any pedal. So I had a buddy of mine come over so I can do the old-fashioned way of pump and hold, and now they stop on a dime. All four of them go up and smoke. You can really lock them up good, so they work really nice, and they're gentle when you want them to be and really stop when you need it to be and it was good so I was excited and I didn't take a video beforehand I got the thing running and the carburetor when I got it guy had replaced the carburetor it's a Rochester Quadra Junk replica some Chinese made one off of Amazon and there was a bunch of vacuum leaks it ran like ass but the motor didn't make any weird noises so I knew the motor is good it just needed tuning and playing well found a bunch of vacuum leaks the brake booster itself wasn't hooked up properly um, got it running but the choke wasn't working proper I got the choke done today um, before I bled the brakes I played around with the choke um, got it set really close to where it should be and it sounded like ass I mean the thing idles beautiful but it just sounded like it was backfiring and, and popping and I should have taken a video of that before I went ahead and pulled out this homemade rusty crusty muffle your mama tube the drywall screwed patches on it they wrapped bailing wire around it it's all blown out on one end big crack in here rusty there can you hear all this shit in it? I had the idle on this thing. I could only get it turned up the idle at 610 RPMs. And that was maxed. Idled good. Sounded like shit. So I went ahead. I already had it ordered. I replaced it. Um, you can see here the new tailpipe. The new mama muffler, new pipe here. Got her all in, turned her on, and she was idling at 1200 RPMs. That sucker was so plugged, it's unbelievable. So now, I went ahead and reset the R's. Yeah, still got my fuel pump. Nice little filter. Here's my gas can. I let it run out of gas um, before I shut it off. But uh, we got all the vacuum leaks. Got that choke adjusted. Turned it down from 11.50. It was idling at. Got her idling at 7.50 where she's supposed to idle at once she's warmed up. The old trusty Chevy ignition. Wiggle, jiggle, wiggle, turn, wiggle, push. And then, finally, maybe, can it? <laughs> Might have to buy a new cylinder. Oh, there it went. There it goes. Ready for this? This thing pops off so fast. And that light's still on, even though the brakes are perfect, so there's got to be a switch somewhere. sewing machine in here. Look at that, guys. She's 
coming along. I was nervous. Nervous if this was just a little too sad for too long for my liking. I was afraid to buy and spend any money on her. I drove it around, it shifts beautifully, it rides decent. Its steering didn't work. The power steering was, I thought, shot. I thought, I thought the gearbox was leaking because there was a puddle under it the last time I backed it in with no power steering fluid at all. I thought maybe there was a major leak somewhere. I think we're running out of gas. Yeah, we're running out of gas. Uh, that, little, that little tank doesn't, doesn't hold much. I only had like a gallon in there, so a little test drive. But, Right underneath this was leaking, and I'm like, God, was the seal here bad? It's wet. Even now, it's kind of wet. And I thought, well, maybe this hose here, it's pretty dry rotted down there. And uh, this was completely empty. And I'm moving it. I need to know if I need a new pump or not. If this thing runs good, I'll put a new pump in it. We want power steering. I might have to take this out and put a new seal in it. So I filled that up with some power steering fluid with leak sealer, and uh, it's never leaked a drop. It's full, it makes no noise, the steering works beautifully. I can't believe it. The water, the fluid I was seeing underneath there was coming from this. You see this hole? Every time you wiggled it, every time you wiggle it, water'd splash out run down here run over there and drip right off the side of the gearbox what are the odds of that so i was thinking the gearbox was leaking no it was is this this is how long this has been sitting this has got washer fluid in it guys look at the crud in here how long has this truck sat neglected and unappreciated it's a little bit of love go a long ways it ain't gonna be no perfect truck but it's gonna be cool and saved and back on the on the road and I tell you what guys underneath and show you some more maybe later I'll do underneath because I still got to pull the tanks that one's got a hole so I'm pulling that one to replace for sure with the new one this one plugged the guy said so I didn't know what was going on I'm gonna clean it out check the lines it might be fine and if it's good, I'm going to put it back in. If it's not, I'm just going to run one tank. It'd be nice to keep the two tanks, but... How cool if this had new door panels, new seat, nice new rubber floor, the dash looking new, new glass, all new weather strip, all new weather strip out here. Get this painted black again. Get all new weather strip. I'll rebuild these and clean the glass so it looks good with nice new black rubber all the way around. I'm going to keep sanding on everything to get it down and maybe do a little faux patina add-on. This headache rack is supposed to protect the window. and I don't know. They must have been doing something that they wanted it that high. Because technically this should be level with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it because you don't want to stock stuff on top of this because this slides. And you don't want to damage or dent. And I need to clean that up and re-grease it too. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower this to where it's supposed to be. So it sits just above the roof line. That way when you stack stuff on it, it's higher than the roof. So you don't dent the roof or level with the roof, maybe a little higher. And then get that to match. That way you can still use it if you wanted to. Um, you know, you go to a car show or something, you can put racks across there and carry your luggage or who knows. I mean, you can come up with a neat way to actually utilize it. How cool is this going to be, guys? Am I am I crazy for thinking putting regular 16-inch wheels and getting rid of the 19.5s that are really expensive tires are over 200, almost 300 bucks a piece? Put the 16-inch back on here, some wagon wheels. I gained I gained four inches. These are three and just over three quarters of an inch taller than the factory wheels that came on here from the from GM. That'll give me more wheel well room because then the tire will be about here I, 
I'll be able to lower this and maybe do a 4-6 drop on it. I want to do two and a half to three inch drop spindles in the front. Axle flip kit, possibly shackles, and then do a C notch and get this thing sitting in the weeds, but drivable and usable. I think it's going to be a really cool rig. Let me know what you guys think. It's going to be a while. I'm slowly doing this, but I've got other projects that I've promised relatives to get done. My dad's car's got to get done. Maybe we'll do some videos on that. Um, I've already done a bunch of it. But I think, you know, getting that sitting down, getting this level sitting down. I mean, if I can drop this two inches just by changing tires this height, then by doing a four inch drop, this thing would be sitting pretty damn cool. I think it is gonna be pretty damn neat. Let me know, guys. Ah, who knows? I'll probably piece this whole video together and you won't be able to let me know until I'm done with it and it's too late. But even then, let me know if you like it. If it's done when you see this video and I actually have video of it being done, let me know if you like it. It'll probably go up for sale, but I ain't letting it go the way it runs. And when I get done with it, I'm, I'm definitely, you know, got a dollar amount of profit I need to make off of it for my time and effort and return on my investment. And if I don't make it, she'll be mine. I'll just, I'll just drive the wheels off it. I just think it's it's gonna be so cool when I'm done. Cool to my liking. Hopefully everybody else. So get all new lights. That's what I'm gonna go do right now. We'll price out all new headlights and bulbs. Maybe new maybe new lenses down there. Those are pretty cheap. These lenses. These lenses are pretty cheap too. Get myself a bow tie. And then uh I'll probably clean all this up now that I know it runs good and it's worth it. I'll clean all this up and paint it. Maybe get that painted. Get the wheel wells painted. I'm not sure on the motor yet. I'll probably paint that black. I got a set of I got a set of just plain stamped chrome valve covers. Maybe I'll put those on for a little look. The wires seem good in this, but I've got a brand new wire set, brand new plugs. I got a brand new cap and rotor. I'm gonna take that all just so I know. And somebody put this in 180, number one's over here. So I'm gonna make sure it's set back to where it's supposed to be, run the wires properly, get them all organized. Lately I've had kind of a fetish trying to organize wire, uh, spark plug wires so they look good. Get some paint on these manifolds, clean up the steering rod, get this blacked again. Yeah, we'll get it all fresh. Like I said, that could be a show truck, but it might, it's definitely gonna be a cool truck. At least I think so. My buddy was over here helping me. He still looks at me like I'm crazy, but he likes pretty things. He likes his stuff shiny and painted. He likes my, he likes my Patina 64. That's my Patina 64 down there. We'll do a video on that later. I ain't gonna tease you with that. But, He's not sure why I'm doing this. He's like, I don't know about the utility bed thing. Why would you? Why why wouldn't you? It's pretty cool. You don't see a lot of them. I mean, I've seen them. It's not like it's gonna be the first one done. But it'll definitely be different when you show up to a car show or go to a cruise in or something. It'll definitely be a different rig. I'll sit nice and low, patinaed, running good, looking interior looking good, engine compartment looking good. Leave the rest crusty rusty. Yeah, all right, I'm rambling. As Matt Happel says, Rambletron. Sorry about that. I'm just excited it runs so stinking good now that I'm excited it's worth it. It's worth putting the money into. It's worth making happen. Oh, hi, big red one. How you doing? Good job hauling that back. All right. Till the next clip or next video, we'll see. Have a good one, guys.